स्टैंडर्ड सिक्स हिस्ट्री चैप्टर सेवन अशोका द एम्प्रर हु गेव अप वोर रोशन रूपी रोशन क्लच द क्रिप्स नोट देट आर ग्रांड फादर हेड गीव हर ऑन हर बर्थडे वाइल सी बेडली वॉन्टेड टू बाय अ न्यू सी डी सी ऑल्सो वॉन्टेड टू जस्ट सी एंड फील द ब्रांड न्यू नोट्स इट वॉज देन देट सी नोटिस दैट ऑल ऑफ them had a smiling face of gandhi ji printed on the right and a tiny set of lions on the left what were the lions there for she wondered a very big kingdom and empire the lion that we see on our notes and coins have a long history they were carved in stones and placed on the top of a massive stone pillar at sarnath what about you read in chapter 6 ashoka was one of the greatest ruler known to history and on his instruction inscriptions were described on pillars as well as on rock surface before we find out what the written in this inscription let us see why his kingdom was called an empire the empire that ashoka ruled was formed by his grandfather chandragupta maurya more than 2300 years ago chandragupta was supported by a wise man named chanakya or kautilya many of chanakya's ideas were written down in book called the arthashastra dynasty when members of same family become ruler one after another the family is often called a dynasty The Maurya were a dynasty with three important rulers: Chandragupta, his son Bindusar, and Bindusar's son Ashoka. There were several cities in the empire marked with black dots on the map. This includes the capital Patliputra, Takshashila, and Ujjain. Takshashila was a gateway to the northwest, including Central Asia. while ujjain lay on the route from north to south india merchant officials and craft persons probably lived in these cities in other areas there were villages of farmers and herders in some areas such as central india there were forest where people gathered forest produce and hunted animal for food people in different part of the empire spoke different languages they probably ate different kind of food and wore different kind of clothes as well how are empires different from kingdoms emperors need more resources than kings because empires are larger than kingdoms and need to be protected by big armies so also they need a large number of officials who collect taxes ruling the empire as the empire was so large different part were ruled differently the area around patliputra was under the direct control of the emperor this meant that officials were appointed to collect taxes from farmer herder craft person and traders who lived in villages and towns in the area officials also punished those who disobey the rules order many of these officials were given salaries messages went to and fro and spies kept a watch on the officials and of course the emperor supervised them all with the help of members of the royal family and senior ministers there were other areas or province each of these were ruled from a provincial capital such as takshashila or ujjain Although there was some amount of control from Patliputra and royal prince were often sent as governor local customs and rules were probably followed besides there were vast area between these centers here the Maurya tried to control roads and rivers which were important for transport and to collect whatever resources were available as tax and tribute For example the arthashastra tells us that the northwest was important for blankets and south india for its gold and precious stones 
it is possible that these resources were collected as tribute tribute unlike taxes which were collected on a regular basis tribute was collected as and when it was possible from people who gave a variety of things more or less willingly there were also the forest region people living in these areas were more or less independent but may have been expected to provide elephants timber honey and wax to morian officials the em- the emperor and the capital city megasthani was an ambassador who was sent to the court of chandragupta by the greek ruler of west asia named seleucus nicator megasthani wrote an account about what he saw here is a part of his description the occasion on which the emperor appears in public area celebrated with grand royal procession he is carried in a golden palki his guard ride elephants decorated with gold and silver some of the guard carry trees on which live birds including a flock of trained parrot circle about the head of the emperor the king is normally surrounded by armed women he is afraid that someone may try to kill him he has special servant to taste the food before he eats he never sleep in the same bedroom for two nights and about patliputra modern patna he wrote this is a large and beautiful city it is surrounded by a massive wall it has 570 towns and 64 gates the houses of twin three stories and built of wood and mud brick the king's palace is also of wood and decorated with the stone carving it is surrounded with gardens and enclosure for keeping birds why do you think that king had special servant to taste the food he ate in what way was patliputra different from mohenjo-daro hint c chapter 3 Ashoka a unique ruler the most famous maurya ruler was ashoka he was the first ruler who tried to take his messages to the people through inscription most of ashoka's inscription were in prakrit and were written in the brahmi script ashoka's war in kaling kaling is the asian name of coastal orissa see map 5 page 68 ashoka fought a war to conquer kaling However he was so horrified when he saw the violence and bloodshed that he decided not to fight any more wars he is the only king in the history of the world gave up conquest after winning a war Ashok's inscription described the Kaling war this is what Ashok declared in one of his inscription 8 years after becoming king i conquered Kaling about a lakh and a half people were captured and more than a lakh of people were killed this filled me with sorrow why whenever an independent land is conquered lakhs of people die and many are taken prisoner brahmins and monks also died people who went to their relative and friends to their slaves and servants die or lost their loved one that is why i am said and i have decided to observe dhamma and to teach other about it as well i believe that winning people over through dhamma is much better than conquering them through force i am inscribing this message for the future so that my son and my grandson after me should not think about war instead they should try to think about how to spread dhamma How did the Kalinga was bring about a change in Ashoka's attitude towards war? Dhamma is the Prakrit word for the Sanskrit word term dharma. What was Ashoka's dhamma? Ashoka's dhamma did not involve worship of a god or performance of sacrifices. He felt that just as a father tried to teach his children He had a duty to instruct his subjects. He was also inspired by the techniques of the Buddha. Chapter 
there were a number of problems that troubled him people in the empire followed different religions and this sometimes led to conflict animals were sacrificed slaves and servant are ill treated besides there were quarrels in families and almost neighbors ashoka felt it was his duty to solve these problems so he appointed official known as the dhamma mahamat who went from place to place teaching people about dhamma besides ashoka got his message inscribed on rocks and pillars instructions his official to read his message to those who could not read it themselves ashok also sent messengers to spread ideas about them to other lands such as syria egypt greece and sri lanka try and identify this on map 6 page 76 77 he built roads dug wells and built rest houses besides he arranged for medical treatment for both human beings and animals ashok's message to his subjects people performed a variety of rituals when they fall ill when their children get married when children are born or when they go on a journey these rituals are not useful if instead people observed other practices this would be more fruitful what are these other practices these are being gentle with slaves and servants respecting one's elder treating all creatures with compassion giving gift to brahmins and monks it is both wrong to praise one's own religion or criticize another's each one should respect the other's religion if one praises one's own religion while criticizing another's one is actually doing greater harm to the one's own religion therefore one should try to understand the main idea of another's religion and respect it pandit jawaharlal nehru the first prime minister of india wrote his edicts instructions still speak to us in a language we can understand and we can still learn much from them. the part of ashok's message that you think are relevant today elsewhere somewhat before the time of maurya empire about 2400 years ago emperors in china began building the great wall it was meant to protect the northern frontier of the empire for pastoral people additions to the wall were made over a period of 2000 year because the frontier of the empire kept shifting the wall is about 6400 km long and is made of stone and bricks which are road along the top several thousands people worked to build the wall there are much towers all along at distance of about 100 200 meter in what way do you think ashoka's attitude towards neighboring people was different from that of the chinese emperors looking ahead the maurya empire collapsed about 2200 years ago in its place and elsewhere rose several new kingdoms in the northwest and in part of north india kings known as the indo greek ruled for about 100 years they were followed by a central ancient people known as saks who set up kingdoms in the northwest north and western india some of this kingdom lasted for about 500 years till the saks were defeated by the gupta king chapter 10 the saks in turn were followed by the kushanas about 2000 year ago you will learn more about the kushanas in chapter 9 in north and in part of central india a general of the mauryas named pushwamitra sung set up a kingdom the sungs were followed by another dynasty known as the kanwa 
and by rulers from other families till the establishment of the Gupta Empire about 1700 years ago. The Saks who ruled over part of Western India fought several battles with the Satvahanas who ruled over Western and part of Central India. The Satvahana kingdom which was established about 2100 years ago listed for about 400 years around 1700 years ago a new ruling family known as the vakataks became powerful in central and western india in south india the chols cheras and pandyas ruled between 2200 and 1800 years ago and about 1500 years ago there were two large kingdom those of the palwas and the chalukyas there were several other kingdoms and kings as well we know about them from their coins and inscription as well as from books there were other changes that were taking place in which ordinary men and women played a major role this includes the spread of agriculture and the growth of new towns craft production and trade traders explored land route within the subcontinent and outside and sea route to west asia east africa and southeast asia sea map 6 were also opened up and many new buildings were built including the earliest temples and stupas books were written and scientific discoveries were made this development took place simultaneously at the same time keep this in mind as you read the rest of the book Audio Jungle.